Our next guest expects a 75 basis point hike next week and more hikes after that. Longtime bear David Rosenberg runs Rosenberg Research. He's known for serving as Merrill Lynch's top economist from 2002 to 2009. David, always good to speak with you. Thanks, Melissa. Great to be on. So I'm going to pose the same question to you. You're saying that you expect 75. That's a completely different question from what do you think the Fed should do at this point? What do you think the Fed should do? Well, uh, I'd be pausing right now uh, and assessing all the tightening that's already been put into the system. Uh, I mean, I know that we're talking incessantly about inflation, uh, but the economy is flat in its back right now, and inflation's a lag indicator. Um, but this Fed is bent on focusing on contemporaneous or lagging indicators. Uh, and uh, 75 basis points is baked in the cake because Powell basically put us on watch for that move after Jackson Hole, irrespective of uh, the CPI number yesterday. So what do you think is going to be the consequences of the 75 basis point hike that you think will happen next week? If the economy is already flat on its back and you think the Fed should actually do nothing next week, yeah. um, what happens? Right. Well, look, it's, it's I mean, I'm saying that I'd be pausing on rates. They're, don't forget, they're doubling up on quantitative tightening, uh, and uh, that's going to be an ongoing source of policy restraint, uh, whether they pause on interest rates or not. Um, they're raising rates and uh, reducing the size of their balance sheet in rather dramatic fashion into an inverted yield curve. Uh, and uh, that is going to sow the seeds for uh, a recession if we're not already in one. I can respect uh, those that say that uh, we might not be in one already, um, but it's staring us in the face. Uh, so the consequence is that we're going to have a recession. I guess we can argue, will it be deep or will it be mild? The question is, what ends up getting us out of it? And I think what happens as an economist is that the supply and demand curves uh, start to uh, intersect the other way, and we go back into an, a deflationary environment like we did in 2009. Hey, David, Jeff Mills here. So I want to ask about that inverted yield curve, specifically long-term interest rates. Given your view on the economy right now, do you feel like we've seen a top in long-term interest rates? And then does that translate into the way we should thinking about market leadership? Does, does, if, the, if the market starts to believe we've seen a top in rates, uh, what does that mean for what outperforms, what underperforms? Well, look, I'd like to believe that we've seen a peak uh, in Treasury yields. Uh, you know, the 10-year, I mean, that would be a brave soul to make that call right now when we're a handful of basis points away from hitting a new cycle high. Uh, this whole run-up in Treasury yields hasn't really been about inflation or inflation expectations. Uh, they've been actually remarkably stable. I mean, we just got, look, we just got the new, before the CPI number, we got the New York Fed uh, Consumer Survey. And the three-year median inflation expectation went from 3.18% in July to 2.76% uh, in August. That's the lowest since October 2020. Uh, the Fed's focused on 12-month lagging inflation. Inflation expectations are actually the driver for long-term interest rates. So I'm actually quite heartened about that. But, you know, the Fed continues to take the carry away, and they continue to penalize investors for taking on duration risk. So that's why you're better off being at the front end of the curve. However, I will say that if my recession call comes to fruition, the long end of the curve, whether or not you know we haven't hit a peak yet, that's more of a, a trading or timing uh, you know, discussion. But if we go into recession, there's never been a recession, by the way, even in the stagnation uh, 1970s, the stagflation 1970s, uh, bond yields will come down in a recession. So I do think that no matter where the peak is, if you're going to give me six to 12 months time, I think yields out the curve are going to be quite a bit lower over the, uh, you know, through 2023, call it. David, always great to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. David Rosenberg. Karen, what do you think? Uh, well, it's an interesting position he has that it's it's not about inflation and that's kind of a not really the story. It's it's the economy. I don't know if the economy is doing so badly. I mean, it's really hard always to to see where we are. But coming out of the pandemic, out of the stimulus, it's extra really hard. Mm -hmm. So I sort of think they uh, the Fed should do what they've said they're going to do because we need a Fed with credibility. Yeah, Anwin. Yeah, I think it makes an interesting point in terms of uh, pausing and assessing because there will be some lag and follow through. I, I would say like my, my counterpoint or caveat there would be that I think you run the risk of, as you just mentioned, really eroding credibility in a market that needs exactly that, that is looking uh, to, to, to have some like look through and really know what's, uh, what, what's, what's coming uh, to fruition here. So um, I can understand the arguments from both sides. Again, I think 75 basis points 
is what should happen, is will likely happen, because anything else will probably signal that there is a pivot. And I think then the Fed is behind the eight ball in terms of trying to make up for the work that they've kind of they've under um, underscored or or reversed.